Hi, I'm Robert McIntosh and I'm the head of the School of Social Sciences at Harriet Watt University and I'm delighted to welcome you to this short masterclass on strategy. I'm a professor of strategy and it's a subject which fascinates me. Do you have a strategy? Are you following a strategy? Do your favourite companies have strategies or maybe your favourite sports teams? I presume they do if they're successful and I wanted to explain to you why strategy really matters in a time of crisis, much like the pandemic that's sweeping across the globe just now, our economies are disrupted and it really is important to understand what strategic behaviour looks like in the context of a crisis. Why do firms and individuals and sports teams have strategies? Well, there are three really bad reasons that organisations develop strategy. The first of them is to imitate other people or mimicry. And if all your competitors have strategies and maybe you're a new business and you're small and you're starting out, it's a good idea to, vet, to develop a strategy. The second reason might be some sort of form of compulsion or necessity. If uh, somebody asks you to have a strategy, maybe a regulator or an investor, they might check that you do have a strategy, so you might be compelled to have one. And the third reason might be habit. You've always had a strategy, maybe your 2015 to 2020 strategy is just about to expire, and you want to decide how best you should deal with that by creating a new strategy. These are the three most common reasons that people develop strategy. And they're all rubbish, to be honest. They're not very good ideas at all. Much better reason to have a strategy is you really need one. And that is because you face some kind of challenge or opportunity. Undoubtedly, in a time of pandemic, there is challenge all around us. Business models have been disrupted. Supply chains have been disrupted. Many of us can't leave our homes just now and certainly can't travel internationally. The university itself is experiencing disruption. So there's, if there's some kind of challenge or opportunity that you want to capitalise on, then logically what you need is a strategy that connects you to that challenge. And I'm going to define for you what strategy means. Uh, this definition comes from a book that I wrote um, in 2015. Uh, with a colleague Donald McLean, and we define strategy as the craft of collectively leading to some significant challenge. Individuals can have strategies too, but usually in my research life they are based around organisations or teams having strategies. So there's a process of identifying some significant challenge. Maybe the marketplace that you're in, the product or service that you offer, somebody else has got a much more compelling or competitive offer than you and you find you're losing market share or losing money, losing profit margin. Or maybe you just see a huge opportunity, a traditional business that uh, is doubling in size every few months as the internet sweeps through its, uh, its activities. Or maybe your business, which was relatively small scale, has become really popular. Maybe you manufacture personal protective equipment like face masks and they had a specialist market in healthcare settings, but now everybody wants them. So there might be some significant opportunity or there might be some significant challenge. Strategy really is the process that allows people to achieve more than can be reasonably expected. So when you see a sports team or a political party or a business or an entire country achieving more than can be reasonably expected, it's fair to say that they are following a strategy. Just recently, the country New Zealand declared itself pandemic free, so there was no coronavirus cases reported over an extended period. And it would have to be said that how they achieved that was quite strategic. They entered into lockdown early, they restricted people's movements and engaged in tracing and tracking uh, people, and they've had very severe restrictions in place for a period of time. But now they find that the country is coronavirus free. And so they're able to lift all of the restrictions that many of us are still living with. Given how difficult some countries have found the, the pandemic, that might be said to be more than can be reasonably expected for a relatively small country like New Zealand. But strategy usually is about the relationship between what you're doing now and the medium to longer term future of your organisation. So think about your own situation and think about your own personal ambitions or goals and think whether you are being strategic. Is there something that you are doing which is going to allow you to rise to the significant challenge of achieving what you want to achieve? Maybe it's getting a degree, maybe it's getting a particular kind of job, maybe it's running your own business, maybe it's uh, achieving something particular in your life uh, that might be work-related or personal. And a strategy then would be how you're going to do that. Strategy is also defined as
uh, a theory of how you're going to compete. So when a small company or team or uh, group take on a much better resourced team or group or company, they have to have a strategy. So if you're going to take on Amazon in the online retail space, you'll need to have a strategy for dealing with that. If you're going to be the most successful person to graduate from your year group, you're going to need a strategy to help you deal with that. Jay Barner, the American academic, then defined strategy as a firm's theory about how to compete. And I would generalize that to say that that could be true for you as an individual, but it could equally be true of you in a team setting, or you in the company that you work for, or you in your studies, or you in your future career. And in times of crisis, which is what this short talk was about, why is that important? Well, it's important because of a concept in the strategy literature called dynamic capabilities. And dynamic capabilities is an idea in strategy about the relationship between how you currently do something and how you're going to do that in the future. Uh, Sid Winter, one of the authors in that field, has this definition in relatively easy to understand language where he says it's the relationship between how you're making money today and how you plan to change how you make money today. The idea behind that is if you stay making money in the same way that you've always done it, then others will begin to copy your behaviour and your advantage, what the literature calls your competitive advantage, will gradually erode. So it's important to keep innovating, it's important to keep changing what you do. And this idea of dynamic capabilities is one of the key concepts and strategy about how you do that. In a time when the world economy is in such turbulence, some business models have been very resilient, some supply chains have been very resilient, and strategy is going to be one of those subjects which will help you understand the relationship between what you've always done, which has historically been successful, and what you'll need to do in order to be successful going forward. It's a very difficult thing to make that relationship work because we get, tend to get attracted to the thing we're already good at. Nobody likes to do new things if you're already good at things. If you're already making money, if your customers are happy, if your profit margins are okay and your technology is okay, it's very challenging to think about abandoning that and starting something different. Typically, when we start something different, we're worse at it and we don't like being worse at things. So dynamic capabilities is an area of work which is very challenging for individual organisations. And just in the in the period of the pandemic, lots of organisations have been challenged to think differently about how they monetize their services, what they do, which, uh, which customers value. Some businesses have been incredibly successful during pandemic. The majority of businesses, however, have actually found it really difficult to maintain their traditional operating mode. And so if you come to Heriot Watt and choose to study a management related degree, the most important subject in my view that you'll study is strategy because strategy is the subject that will get you to tie together all of the other things that you might study. What kind of technology the organization needs, what kind of people it has, how its finances are structured, how its logistics and operations get products and services from the right place to the right people at the right time, and how its marketing works. All of those get connected together by the organization's strategy. And ideally, that strategy is connected to a specific problem or opportunity that the organization wants to address. And over time, because strategy really is about the medium to longer term, over time, the critical thing is that that strategy reflects changes in how you've historically made money and what you're going to do going forward that will make money for you in the future. And so that's for me why strategy really matters in a crisis. Strategy matters in every part of your life, from you as an individual through to the business that you work for and the, the country that you live in. Being strategic is by far the smartest thing that you can do if you want to achieve more than can be reasonably expected. And who doesn't want to achieve more than can be reasonably expected? So I hope you've enjoyed this short masterclass. I hope you enjoy having a look around our virtual, virtual open day at Harriet Watt. And I hope you come to study with us at one of our campuses in Scotland, in the UK, in Dubai, or in Malaysia, or indeed at all of them, because many of our students transfer from one campus to another as part of their studies with us. Thanks for your time and attention and have a great day.